The IC's code of professional ethics is something you definitely need to know for the exam. It's important to understand this as an IC squared professional, and we're going to go over it right now. So all certification holders need to adhere to the IC code of ethics. You can find the full uh, IC code of ethics right here, IC squared org slash ethics let's go ahead and take a look at that website uh, now there's a lot of information there you're not going to need to know all of it but we're going to have the procedures committee members uh, how to report frauds the preamble all of these different topics here really there's a few key pieces of information you'll need to memorize for your exam regardless of whatever isc squared exam you're trying to take so Let's examine that. I do invite you to take a look at this website and familiarize yourself with these. You don't necessarily need to know like the committee members, uh, but if you do come across an ethical concern, this is where you'd want to go. Now for the exam, you're going to need to know a few key pieces of information. You're going to need to know the preamble, which states the safety and welfare of society and the common good duty to our principles and to each other requires that we adhere and be seen to adhere to the highest ethical standards of behavior. So, and uh, therefore strict adherence to this code is a condition of certification. So IC squared requires that you adhere to their code of ethics. It's not just some words on a page, it's a requirement if you wanna be a fully certified IC squared member. And you need to follow the key canons. Okay, these canons, you definitely need to know these for the exam and to be a member in good standing. So we need to protect society, the common good, necessary public trust and confidence, and the infrastructure. Act honorably, honestly, justly, responsibly, and legally. Provide diligent and competent service to principles and advance and protect the profession. First, it's good to know these uh, and adhere to these principles. If you don't have a moral compass yourself, IC squared has given you one, but it's a really good way to conduct yourself as a cybersecurity professional. Now, if you're gonna see these on the exam, if you memorize these, you're gonna get easy points on your exam if you're taking CISSP, for sure, because you're gonna have questions, I almost guarantee you're gonna have at least one question on the IC code of ethics. Now, you might see a question that would ask you something like, you know, Jimbo attends a cybersecurity convention on protecting infrastructure cybersecurity for uh, power systems. What code of ethics canon is Jimbo adhering to? And that would be advancing and protecting the profession, most likely. You may uh, argue it would be protect society, common good, necessary public trust, confidence in the infrastructure. But advance to protect the profession, anything that relates to, say, a professional a, a conference would be advanced to protect the uh, profession. Or, you know, if it's like uh, Susan is providing cybersecurity consultation to a company and, you know, has done her, her security control assessments for the month, but notices that there is an additional vulnerability, lies outside the scope of the assessment, uh, but it might benefit the organization to know about know something about uh, that vulnerability, for example. You know, and Susan should, you know, she supplies some additional information as a courtesy, and that could be providing diligent and competent service to principals. So, if it's any, ever a question about honesty or how you should conduct yourself, that would be act honorably, honestly, justly, responsibly, and legally. So, if it's ever a legal conundrum. That's going to be your code of ethics canon, and if it's ever um, if it's ever anything like say you know you're doing bug bounties or any community service pro bono cybersecurity work that might be protect society the common good necessary public trust and confidence and the infrastructure. So there's different scenarios you might see on your exam with test questions that were that would require you to identify to one of these canons. But again, you would need definitely memorize the preamble and the canons for your exam. And I hope this was helpful. They, they are, I think it's a very good, you know, set of professional ethics, but I hope this is helpful for me to break this down for you.